Hello and welcome to the first White Wonder video of 2024, more specifically a viewpoint episode. Now I haven't done one of these in a little while and I've had the script written up for this one since the summer, back when it was warm and dry. Today though it most certainly is not summer and although it is dry for now it's certainly not warm either. Nonetheless I've come out today to Whitwell situated on the southern tip of the island and I'm here to visit one of the most famous viewpoints and landmarks on the island which is of course St Catherine's Down. Along the way I will also be giving you a little bit of history on the area itself including the story of an infamous shipwreck and its direct connection with the landscape. The start point for this video is reachable via the number 6 bus and a short trek through the village. If you are a bus user though, be sure to time your journeys correctly, as if you miss one, the gaps in the timetable can be as large as 2 hours. St Catherine's Down can also be reached via Knighton and Chale, but for the purposes of this video I'm sticking to my own route. Whitwell took its name from, you guessed it, a well, which medieval pilgrims believed was holy and contained water with healing powers. The village now, despite its remoteness, is still relatively busy, with one of its main attractions being the White Horse Inn pub. It was first established as a public house in as early as 1454, making it the oldest pub on the island, as well as one of the oldest in England. Now though the pub is incredibly tempting, I'm going to continue on my journey, heading west out of the village towards St Catherine's Down. Leaving the village, we head west past Stratwell Manor, built in the mid-1800s on the site of a previous 16th century house. The land it was built on and the environment encircling Whitwell is classified as an area of outstanding natural beauty and it doesn't take much walking before you start to see why. So we just walked up Kingsgate Lane, we're now walking up Crocker Lane and at this point the route starts to ascend towards St Catherine's Down. The down itself stretches from north to south down the lower spine of the island and at its summit it reaches 240 metres in elevation. As we climb further, we get our first glimpse of a monument that islanders call the Pepper Pot. More on that though in a bit, because first I'm taking a quick detour north along the down to another distinctive landmark. This is the Hoy Monument. 72 foot high and standing proud on the hill, it was constructed in 1814 by Michael Hoy to celebrate the visit of the Russian Tsar Alexander I, along with a plaque on the north face of the monument to commemorate the event. 40 years later though in 1857, this plaque was added to the south side of the monument and in stark contrast to the other one, this one honours the brave men who fought in the Crimean War, a two and a half year conflict between Russia and the Allied forces of France, the Ottoman Empire and of course the British. Heading south, we travel back over the spine of the down, boasting spectacular views over Chell and the coastline towards Tennyson. Our next landmark, though not as large, is certainly the most interesting. This intriguing object, which as I said earlier the locals call the Pepper Pot, is the remains of a medieval lighthouse and oratory, dating back to 1314, making it the only medieval lighthouse surviving in Britain. The amazing thing about it is it's still here, well preserved, wind battered for centuries, built in 1314, that's before the Hundred Years War, before the bubonic plague, which wiped out 60% of the population of Europe. But more than that, probably the most intriguing thing about it is that it wasn't built to honour a god, king, queen or war. It was actually built by a thief. Well, that's mostly true. The long gone adjoining oratory was perhaps not built to honour a god, 
but certainly was for priests to pray to one. Both the lighthouse and oratory, though, were built by a thief. But why? If you remember earlier, I mentioned shipwrecks. Well, this part of the coastline was, for centuries, notorious for its wreckings. The story goes that on a stormy day in the early 1300s, a vessel by the name of the Blessed Mary was carrying a cargo of 174 tonnes of wine when she came a cropper on the rocks at Chail. Local landowner Walter de Goddeton witnessed the ruin and perhaps a little parched, jumped at the opportunity to help himself to a couple of barrels. Unluckily for Walter though, he was swiftly found out. And even worse than that was the fact that the cargo of booze was actually originally bound for the Monastery of Livers in Picardy, no pun intended there. Walter's theft then was upheld as a crime against the Catholic religion itself, a religion that he himself was a firm believer in. Therefore, to amend his wrongdoing and repair his relationship with the church, he built an oratory and the adjoining lighthouse on the hill, where priests praying for the souls of the lost seamen could also tend to the light itself. Despite this though, shipwrecks kept happening along the coastline. The light was just too dim and the lighthouse was not tall enough. When the thick fog rolled in, you could hardly see anything at all. Thus in 1785, construction started on a new lighthouse just north of the medieval one. It though was never completed as it became apparent during its construction that the issue wasn't the lighthouse itself, but rather the location situated high on the down above the coastline, fog would always be a major concern. Another half a century passed, and still the shipwrecks continued. But one tragic disaster stood out amongst the many, and it directly influenced the importance of coastal safety. In 1836, the Clarendon, a merchant cargo vessel, was on its way back from the West Indies bound for London under the command of Captain Samuel Walker. It was carrying people as well as rum, sugar and other Caribbean delicacies. All was well until it was struck by a freak storm just off the southwest coast of the island and that storm would decide its fate. As much as the crew tried to fight the fierce gales, she ran aground near Black Gang at 6am on the morning of the 11th. The rock face was menacing and within minutes the ship had capsized and began to break up. Onlookers were helpless as the cliff itself was steep and perilous. One man though, John Wheeler, with aid of a rope, managed to scale down the cliff and heroically flung himself into the stormy waters. Incredibly in the chaos, he managed to save three souls. But by this time the ship had been almost completely destroyed and almost everyone else had perished. In all, 25 people had thought to have lost their lives, but no one really knew the exact amount of souls that were on board the ship at the time of its demise. The tragedy itself became probably the most famous of the island shipwreck stories. Public outcry led to the construction of a third lighthouse, and one that is still with us today. St Catherine's Lighthouse was built in 1838, two years after the Clarendon tragedy, situated right on the tip of the southernmost point of the island. It was first lit in 1840 and was originally 40 metres tall, but because of that old faux dense fog, it was lowered by 13 metres to improve visibility. The light itself was originally lit by oil until the 1880s when it was converted to electric. And then in 1904, a four-sided optic lens was installed and this remained in place until as recently as 2021, when it was removed and put into storage. The lantern room is now sadly empty and in its place is a not quite so characterful LED. Even so, the character of the structure itself is still very much in place. 
And although public tours of the lighthouse ceased during the pandemic and haven't recontinued since, it is still well worth a visit, especially on a beautiful evening such as this. So that's it for this video. I've now got to go and get a bus back to Ventnor. It leaves in 10 minutes, so I better get a move on because otherwise I'll be stranded here. Not the worst place to be stranded, but it is very cold, very cold indeed. Thank you so much for watching, as always. We will see you again very soon. All the best, take care and uh, stay warm.